hold dollars. It doesn't have to hold organisms only. Some may hold dollars. Some may hold, um, some may hold, uh, you know, uh, quantities like the amount of medication available for people, right? Um, and uh, and you would have um, you would have those stocks maintaining different uh, different quantities in the in the model. Um, okay, so uh, I want to mention system structure diagrams. What does this diagram look like to you? It's kind of a, a, a it's kind of a combination of a causal loop diagram on the one hand, with a stock and flow diagram on the other, and in fact, there are within our model a set of within a stock and flow model, there's going to be a set of feedbacks associated with it, and this sort of system structure diagram is used to document those feedbacks. Those feedbacks are here; they're present in the model structure. We can deduce them automatically but we often will, will draw them on here for good effect. Um, for example, can anyone tell me why is there a shown as being a negative feedback loop involving, um, well, say, involving in infectives on the one hand and recoveries on the other? You'll notice there's this, this negative feedback here. Why do we say there's a, a negative feedback? Anyone? So, who that's telling you how the recoveries are by Okay. So, so what are the if if we were to draw out links that form that that um, negative feedback? What's the first link? It's say, say without privileging it, there might be a link between infectives and recoveries, recoveries and then between recoveries and infectives. 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 Now. Ah, ah, okay. Um, thank you, Kurt. So that so that's very good. The link here is very obvious between infectives and recoveries. And let's just go through the process of, of verifying that it's a negative feedback loop. Who can help me kind of reason through um, this process, talking about, well, if A increases, does B increase, all the other things being equal or decrease? Who can walk me through this? So, First link from infectives to recoveries. Why is it a labeled plus? Because good, good. Um, we could we could phrase it the other way. If there's fewer infectives, there'd be fewer recoveries. All of the things being equal, right? Certainly, it, it's got to depend on it. We know that because if there's no infectives, it's going to be no recoveries. There's no one to recover. No one with, in Saskatoon right now with Ebola. There's no one recovering from Ebola. Pure and simple. Okay. Okay. So that's that first step. Now, how about the second step? First of all, if it's a negative feedback, the second step from uh, recoveries to infectives is that. That's true, although that's through recovered, it turns out here. Right now, they're coming to a state where they can't be affected. Let me ask this. The polarity of the link from this, from recoveries to infectives, what polarity does that have to have? Plus or minus? Minus. Minus, because this first one is a plus, right? So this other one has got to be a minus, right? So can anyone help me reason through Using that same statement, if this increase, so help me reason this through that polarity. So if so, if we have more recoveries, if we have, if we said, wow, this week we had a hundred recoveries, you know, of 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 patients who had TB, would we ha tend to have if it went up to a hundred from fifty on per week basis? Um, if we had Instead of 50 per week, we had 100 per week. There was an increase in the number of recoveries, you know, measured per week or, or per whatever unit time. Would that tend to increase or decrease the number of infectives in, through this connection? Decrease. That would tend to be lower than it otherwise would have been, right? Mm. So hence, the, you view that as it's an outflow. Kurt, Kurt sort of nailed it on the head. 
um, it's this is an outflow from it, and hence it comes as a, a negative. Increase this, and therefore this decreases compared to what it otherwise would have been. So hence it's a negative feedback. Does that make sense to people? So so the neg so this is the remain the sort of part of the of the feedback that's it's through this flow. Similarly, this guy here, right? You increase the number of recovered people, people who are temporarily immune, you, you could have more people who could have waning of immunity, this loss of immunity, and that would tend to decrease the number of recovered. So a fair number of these feedbacks go through, ladies and gentlemen, flows. And remember my earlier chestnut to the effect that feedbacks in general involve one stock, because the stock is the thing that prevents that feedback from being instantaneous, typically. And sometimes feedbacks are associated with long delays, because the delays associated with changing that stock, okay. changing, changing, changing things, like changing the amount of CO2 or what have you uh, in the atmosphere. So here, here we have um, stocks, uh, stocks and flows shown together with causal diagrams. Question. If you, if, okay, so so remember we're talking about a flow here. Oh, oh, oh sorry, no, no, yeah, not recoveries. You're talking about recoveries, okay. the stock, okay. Because I was going to say, if we're talking about a flow, we have to talk not in terms of numbers, but in terms of rates, how, how many per, yeah. whatever. But we're talking, per is actually talking about recovered. So if we had more recoveries, we said, oh, we have all these people who got flow, um, you know, um, we have more people who are at risk of, of having their immunity to flu wane. In other words, so pertussis, we have a lot of people who have got pertussis, and it turns out pertussis, if you get pertussis once, it doesn't protect you for life. You, you're, you're, you, if you have 100 of these, you could have more people at risk of, of waning, so we'll tend to have all of the things being equal, more people, a greater rate of people losing their immunity, okay? on a per year basis. If we had zero of these, we'd have no one. Yeah. If we had a hundred of these, we'd have more of these. If we had two hundred, if we had a million of these folks who just got pertussis, poor folks, um, we, we'd, we'd have more people who would be at risk of having their immunity wane, right? So that's a positive, that's a, oh, that's a, oh, 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 that should be a plus. Okay. Oh. Thank you. Um, okay, now this is really awkward. Um, okay. Um, uh, well, I'll, I'll, I'll draw it in here before. I um, and, and this is an example of a system structure diagram. This is from a study in Africa, economic welfare, having to do with stigma and migration and people's social networks and, and AIDS progression and, and sort of people trying to make, make a living while, while uh, under AIDS and sort of uh, the critical role of women in, in this context. So this is a stock and flow diagram. This diagram is, is actually distinguished from this one in the sense that this is actually a runnable model. This model is actually not runnable, but it's, it, so sometimes it further clarifies things within a, a, a causal loop diagram to actually include stocks and flows. Because ladies and gentlemen, within a, within a causal loop diagram, if we have just, you know, A is connected with B in a positive way, we don't know the semantics of that. We don't know the nature of that relationship. And if this is a stock and flow relationship, it's to understand the dynamics of the system better if we represent it like this. this. This tells us a lot more about the nature of the relationship. Because among other things, it says if you change A, you can expect to change B, but over time, that impact will be manifested over time. It will be manifested typically instantly, with the exception. No, no, okay. Um, so, <laughs> with the exception, uh, but for a lot of systems, we're, we're not going to be able to, to 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 influence this over time. I think part of the issue is a bank a bank withdrawal is an event. It's like. In essentially an instantaneous event. It's not like a continuous flow. I think that's part of what's going on here. It's not we have 
some dollars per month coming in or something. It's like, okay, bang, we're gonna we're gonna withdraw it. And so that that throws off the reasoning a little bit. Here, if we have A coming in to B as a flow, a change in A will lead to a change in B, that that change will occur over time. Um, if we have water in the South Saskatchewan or the Bow River coming from Calgary, it's gonna it's gonna end up increasing the the rate of Lake De the the volume of Lake Diefenbaker, but that that will be absorbed over time, and the and the volume of water in Lake Diefenbaker will rise over time. Right? If you have at the cellular level a larger number of of uh, amount of sodium, which opens up sodium channels to change the concentration of the amount of sodium in a cell. That concentration will change over time, but it, but it'll change, it'll readjust in a sort of gradual way. And so here, it can help in a model, in short, to distinguish a stock and flow relationship rather than just representing it as this sort of thing. Does that make sense to people? And, and that allows us sometimes to reason through what we could change more easily. Um, it also allows for capturing the fact that, you know, we may have we may have you know flo several flows into the same stock, et cetera. That, that you know maybe we have C influencing, maybe we have D influencing B also, and, and C influencing B, and those might be more clearly represented as as flows here. So we have you know C and and D, and maybe C you know um, in turn lowers E. And maybe, maybe that's actually a stock and flow relationship. So it's E and B are two, are two stocks here. Um, and, uh, and really, the um, C is serving as a flow between them. This is going to be a lot more clear communicative than to just show it like this, where C increases B through a link, and C decreases E through a link. It would be clear if we show it as a stock and flow. Okay. That semantics is clear that C is a flow. E and B are stocks, and C connects the two of them. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, so apologies for not having a, a better diagram um, with that. Um, okay. Um, I don't have time to, to go over this uh, today, but one thing you might want to look at in the slides I've already posted to the site is uh, for those interested in the software development process, those from computer science background, you could think of a lot of things which goes on in software development projects as being stocks and flows. So we have bugs built up, known sets of bugs. One of the, the biggest worries as a stock in our lives as software developers is this flow, undiagnosed bugs. We we we'll often know something about bug reports. We have a certain number of bug reports, defect reports, or SDI, system trouble incidents from users. We know about active bugs, act bugs that have been sanitized, sort of that we've gone through and said, yeah, it's a real bug, it's distinct from the others, which we have in our active bugs list. It's, it's, it's substantive, it's with the appropriate version of the software, so it's in our active bugs. Or then bugs we've triaged that are important. And over time, we fix bugs. So they're assigned to developers, they work on them, and they fix them, and then they're in a believed fixed stock. So we could represent a lot of the key dynamics associated with software development using a model such as this, having stocks and flows. And, and uh, sometimes this forces you to recognize there are certain stocks whose values you don't know. Like how many undiagnosed bugs there are out there? Is it large or is it small? And there's ways to try to to try to estimate that. Um, so I've I've described some um, some challenges here, which you could you could think about. Um, okay. Um, in any case, uh, I've given you a glimpse of of some um, some issues with flows. I want to leave you with one final thing. Okay. So um, so this would be um, further.